Hello, this is the voice of Adam. Welcome to the second episode of Memento Memo, a monthly visual audio moment where I invite you to zone out, leave your troubles at my digital door, and lose yourself in the tremulous, disembodied, honeyed tones of my voice. It is the evening of July 21st, 2018, a peaceful 74 degrees in the shadow of the Space Needle. On the screen, I present to you a handful of books crowded around a record player. This landscape is meant to invoke an image of class, elitism, and style. I'd like you to imagine the music of Vivaldi echoing through the hallways of my home as I gleefully roll around in the sun, bouncing from one book to the next, ecstatic glee radiating from my body. In reality, my home is filled with the moans of sexual frustration, emaciated whimpering and the drip, drip, drip of a leaky faucet that has followed me ever since I stole the cursed ring off a dead woman's corpse. All that is put to the side though. It is me, it is you, it is Vivaldi and the books. Here is a picture of Thomas Hardy. Here is a couple books on the late 19th century French post-impressionistic painter Henri Rousseau. Rousseau was famous for his self-taught naive style, more importantly the ownership and the confidence that he took within that style. He painted a wide variety of subjects but today is most often recognized for his jungle paintings. Crowding the canvas with foliage, intermingled with animals and humans, Rousseau referred to these as his Mexican paintings. Inspired by his foreign travels as a young man, it was later revealed that no such travels took place. The vegetation was likely inspired from the local hothouses of Paris. The beast illustrations lifted and often even traced from animal photography books of the time. Take a moment to get lost in the jungle of Rousseau's mind. Thank you, Henri. I in many ways relate to Henri Rousseau. I, like him, will probably not get recognition till after my death. I have a style that is reserved yet over-embellished, an often naive outlook on art and life, but one that ultimately transcends all that to a greatness, to an artistic vision that is uniquely my own. Like Henri, I'm often mocked by critics. Those who ridicule or judge my artistic choices will ultimately be standing on the wrong side of history, as my creations, my videos, and in many ways my life shall be preserved, studied, canonized, and cherished for centuries to come. Here is a picture of B.B. Anderson. Hello, B.B. Beach reeds, fluff reeds, laying by the pool reeds, easy breezy beautiful cover reeds. What are those light-hearted books that you turn to in the hazy, lazy days of summer? Seven recommendations to you and your children. KL, A History of the Nazi Concentration Camps by Nicholas Waxman. Try by Dennis Cooper. Tested the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. Fire in the Lake, The Vietnamese and the Americans in Vietnam by Francis Fitzgerald. Recovery by John Berryman, The 120 Days of Sodom by the Marquis de Sade, and Meg, Because You Hate Your Life. Beach reeds, fluff reeds, laying by the pool reeds, easy breezy beautiful cover reeds. Here is a picture of Meredith Baxter burning. Hello, Meredith. Thank you for listening and or watching to another Memento Memo, a visual podcast moment, taking it one step at a time, through the power of voice, through the power of books. I will return with not one, but two videos next week, 
one on the Man Booker Prize, Long List, 2018, the other on the Memento Mori Book to Film Club for Children of Men. Did you read the book? Did you watch the film? Talk to me about it next Thursday. Chin up, take care, and Godspeed.